At BattleBots, crushers are a very rare breed. But this season, Quantum has brought the most powerful crusher in BattleBots history with 35,000 pounds of crushing force, showing that this design is more than just viable. Gentlemen, you've been away for three years. Mm -hmm. You've come back into this. I'm sure you've seen some bots that have evolved over the, that three years that have really sort of changed your opinion of what you feel you need to do. How do you guys feel about being here? It's incredible to be back. I mean, we've been away, it seems like five minutes in one space, but it seems like a lifetime when you come back and you look at how far the competitors have gone. You think, right, I'm ready for this. Then you turn up and go, oh, oh maybe we're not. <laughs> We were having a conversation earlier about sort of predicted models and driving styles. Yes. And the fact that you were talking about you're really paying attention to the other robot mm. and not always seeing your robot in the frame of your field of vision, but knowing where it should be. Uh, absolutely. It's like a racing driver. They're not looking at what's right directly in front of them. They're looking at what's around the corner. And, and it just, just happens. It just naturally works. And, and it's the same for us. Half the time, I don't even know where, what direction Quantum's facing, but it's like an extension of your body. You get comfortable with it and you get used to it, and you're watching that other machine, and you, you're making corrections to suit, and you hope that the robot's following what you're telling it to do, but yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things, the more you practice, the better you get with it. But if you're watching your own machine and not the other, you don't know what's happening there. You need to train yourself to look at the other machine and make your robot go. It looks like a really organic way of driving as well, because it's the same with the heads. Obviously, you, you trigger the hydraulics, and there's a there's a delay, there's a thing that happens before the head starts moving. So, so you you're preempting. There's like a, this unspoken connection between the driver and the weapons operator of firing the hydraulics before you've even got to the other robot, so that as soon as you're over the top of them, it's got the bite. And then when you when you watch the machine naturally, it looks like it's a living thing because it's. It's just doing everything on the queue, and that, that's when you yeah, get the most performance out of it. It is your style, watching you drive, is a very analog style, smoother in its yeah. curves. You aren't really doing this. You, no, the, the, you drive around the arena in a way that's smooth. Yeah, well, I've been a professional 3D helicopter stunt pilot for remote control helicopters, and, and that's absolutely critical to be really smooth with you with your throttle and your, or your pitch and everything, and that, that converts really well to robots. As soon as you start jamming the throttle and the steering, you start losing traction. It's like in a race car, you, you just slam the throttle, you lose it in the crash. Right. Um, so yeah, being smooth is key, but being quick and on the ball is just as important. You guys are definitely one of the more technically advanced bots here, not just with sort of the choice of hydraulics and what you've done, but also within the process of making this bot. I mean, you've chosen generative design to do all the structural engineering and FEA to get this robot to be the most efficient it can be with its shapes that also give you the most beautiful bot here. So, thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. So, yeah, we, we, everything we do, we try and do the absolute best we can do. It, it's James and myself and a little bit of our father, Nick, that helps build some of this. And we're nothing special. We don't have tools that everybody else here doesn't have access to. Every piece on this machine, you can machine on one of those Tormax. Um, and so it's really important for us to just push the boundaries of what can be done. So we use Fusion 360 to use the generative design section of that to help us model all of this up. And James does the, the vast majority of that. Yeah, so the, the machine looks like it, it's like, you, you don't want people to think of it as a pretty robot, because as you said, it's pretty because it, every curve on here it, it has a function. Form so, following function, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what, the way that we do it, obviously you've got the head that pivots here. You've got this ginormous cylinder pushing with 22 tons of force on the back. And you've got the teeth here. So there's a huge loads on this and we're able to add those into the software, give it a weight that it needs to come out to, and it'll sort of melt a block down to come to its perfect, beautiful shape. And the best way of describing it is, if you look in your arms, there's no I-beams in there. And that's because I-beams and squares and triangles are not actually the strongest shapes. You look at your bones in your body and you go, actually, that's the most efficient way to get strength and weight. And this is what we need to do to make a hydraulic robot semi-competitive. Well, thank you, gentlemen.
It's amazing. I love this bot. Thank you. Always a treat to see it in the box. Thank you. Very much Thanks appreciated. Very much. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much.